Mr. I ask that the quorum call be lifted. Without objection. Thank you. Um, Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the Senate proceed to executive session to consider executive calendar number 437, Julianne Smith of Michigan, to be United States permanent representative on the Council of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, and that the Senate vote on the nomination without intervening action or debate. Without objection. The clerk will report the nomination. Nomination, Department of State, Julianne Smith of Michigan, to be United States Permanent Representative on the Council of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Questions on the nomination? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. The nomination is confirmed. Uh, Mr. President, I ask the Motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table, all without intervening action or debate, that no further motions be in order to the nomination, that any statements related to the nomination be printed in the record, and that the President be immediately notified of the Senate's action and the Senate resume legislative session. Without objection. Thank you. Um, Mr. President, I would also like to speak to Julie Smith and her qualifications to be ambassador to NATO. The center is recognized. Julie is really very well qualified to represent the United States within our biggest and most significant security alliance. Her 25-year career has focused on transatlantic relations and security, and she served the country as Deputy National Security Advisor and Acting National Security Advisor to then Vice President Biden. In 2012, she was awarded the Office of the Secretary of Defense Medal for Exceptional Public Service. She's worked at some of the country's most esteemed think tanks that address European issues. And as the U.S. confronts challenges around the world, we need to convey our firm commitment to our allies and our alliances. And for this reason, it is absolutely critical that we put Julie Smith in place as ambassador to NATO as soon as possible. And I'm really very pleased that those who had a hold on her nomination have finally lifted those holds. It's unfortunate that it's taken so long because as we look at what's happening in Eastern Europe in particular, as we look at the migrants who, have, um, who are being used by Belarus, and um, I assume that Vladimir Putin is behind this as well to Allow, send those migrants to the Polish border as a way to distract from what's happening in Eastern Europe. Clearly, the more equipped NATO is to d help deal with those challenges, the better. And if we're going to participate with NATO, we need to have an ambassador on the ground. Should have happened several months ago when she was nominated. So I'm very pleased that she's going to be able to assume her ambassadorship very soon. As co-chair of the Senate NATO Observer Group, I look forward to working with her in her new role. Um, but this should serve as a wake-up call to those people in this chamber who continue to have holds on critical nominees important to this country's national security. As I talk to U.S. allies, it's clear that the delay in sending ambassadors to posts around the world is having a real impact on our relations with our partners. And in the absence of U.S. representation, they are questioning our commitment to our bilateral relationship. Now, I would like to think that my colleagues who have put these holds on our nominees aren't doing it in an effort to undermine America's security and to undermine this administration in protecting the United States. But clearly, that's the impact of what they are doing. Um, I've heard from a lot of my colleagues over the last months about U.S. standing in the world after our withdrawal from Afghanistan. But as they are blocking administration nominees who would work with our allies, who would engage on our shared priorities and values, who would listen to concerns and who could work together, they are just exacerbating any issues that may exist. I don't know why they're doing this, but right now there are 58 other State Department nominees who are awaiting confirmation on the floor. And every day that passes that we have no ambassador in place in countries around the world, 
our national security is compromised. And I've got a very close to home example. Earlier today, I met with the, with Diane Foley, the mother of James Foley, the first American killed by ISIS. And she has done yeoman's work with her foundation to try and help the families of hostages who are being held in countries around the world. And she was talking about what we could do to help those families and do everything to try and help them get their loved ones back to free the hostages who are being wrongly held around the world. Well, one of the things we talked about is the fact that in many of those countries, we don't have ambassadors because we have holds on those folks who are so important to help those families, to help address American interests in those countries. And so what our colleagues are doing by holding up these nominees is undermining the national security of the United States by grinding to a halt our State Department nominees, <clears throat> a small group of my Republican colleagues have allowed partisan brinkmanship to pervade a critical aspect of our national security. You know, there was a, a very important principle established after World War II about partisan politics ending at the water's edge. It's unfortunate that my colleagues on the other side of the aisle are not continuing to support that principle. We are stronger and safer when our diplomatic corps, those individuals who support Americans and U.S. foreign policy around the world, are supported by capable, Senate-vetted, and Senate-confirmed ambassadors. So, Mr. President, I hope we will see in the coming weeks a willingness of those Few people, it's only two or three people on the other side of the aisle who have held people up, that they will release those holds in the best interests of America and of our security. Thank you, and I yield the floor. The absence of a quorum. The clerk will call the roll. Ms. Baldwin.